Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good afternoon everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com. Uh, normally nighttime uh, update show. It is right now a little bit after uh, 20 minutes after one. Uh, it is the middle of the day. The reason why I'm doing a uh, recording now is I have to take uh, my son to uh, AAU practice ahead of his Florida trip. So I figure let me share some thoughts um, so I could put this out. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, welcome aboard. Thank you very much for finding us, spending a couple of minutes with us. Uh, if you could be so kind and drop a like, uh, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, that social media stuff that people tell me that I have to do to get more eyeballs on the channel. In uh, in exchange, I try to give you the most unbiased uh, view of the market. So it is uh, 120. Uh, if you look at the scoreboard, NASDAQ up 30 points. Um, we just, again, continue uh, to grind higher. There's nothing really you know, sexy or, you know, provocative about what's going on. It's a bull market. That's what happens when you reclaim the 50-day moving average. It's going to be a perfect segue what we're about to talk about next. Uh, but we are continuously grinding the stocks that are strong. Uh, every single night we talk about them, you know, take them off of rising support, whether it's the daily or the 60-minute support, and they're usually trapped uh, eager shorts because every single time there's a downtick of a strong stock, people think it's a blow off top and they just don't understand the dynamics of a grinding uh, bullish market. Cues uh, again, doing incredibly well just every single day, just hugging the five-day moving average. Every attempt of a sell-off gets bought right on the five-day. Uh, you start to pay attention if we do lose the five-day moving average again, uh, the market does not go linear just because we're above the five-day moving average, above the 50-day moving average. There are uh, spots of nasty pulls along the way. You can see that we happened here a couple of Thursdays ago and happened here. But the dynamics of the market continues to be the same. The structural uh, presence is the same. As long as we stay above the 50-day moving average, that's bullish. Below the 50-day moving average, it is bearish. You can see it right here just from the last example, 412. We lost the 50-day, and the queues went from 4.42 uh, all the way to 4.13 in three trading sessions. And look what happens when we get above the 50-day moving average. We went from uh, 4.32 to 4.65, uh, where we are presently. If you look at the diamonds, you know, market, uh, the Dow continues to have a, a little bit of a hard time uh, getting and staying above the 50-day moving average. It's easily masked because how strong. Uh, the S&P is, how strong the NASDAQ is. But again, the Dow, and again, there's only 30 stocks, but lo and behold, it's still below supplies. That's something that you always want to pay attention to. Uh, the SPYs, just like NASDAQ, uh, just continues to grind higher. There's just enough names that override any type of weakness uh, going into uh, the next trading day. And if you look at some of the names today, you can see the same names over and over again, right? Just same names. You know, Microsoft was weak this morning. It just got green. Meta was strong this morning. Then they tried to sell it off off the five-day. Guess what? It's green. Uh, Amazon has been a really, really strong stock, right? They try to sell it off into the five-day moving average. It just held perfectly the five-day moving average and bounced. The mother of all mothers today, right? The, the, the queen bee today. Uh, is Apple. If you guys remember yesterday, Apple had its WW, uh, I was going to say WWF, uh, the WWDC event. It was really a non-event yesterday. And because it was such a non-event, they sold the stock. And, you know, Apple was down like six, seven points. What a day, a difference a day makes. Today, uh, they came out with some new updates on AI. They got upgraded. And I tell you, first of all, I wasn't even watching this thing in the morning, because I didn't think for a second he could do so. The stock is literally, literally, look at the reversal here from pre-market. Literally hasn't had a down tick. We have all 60-minute green candles. That means the candle is closing higher than the open. I'm still waiting for a dip. It's Again, it's it's one, what is it? It's 124 uh, in, in the afternoon. We haven't had a dip yet 
uh, into rising support. Just it really shows you how how strong uh, the stock is. If you look at the option flow, uh, you see they're coming for the 205s, uh, the 205s, the 207 and a halves, the October 230s. That's a really, really strong, uh, aggressive bets. Uh, so again, kudos to Apple. It really does show you even bad news uh, is, or at least bad news that is perceived to be a non-event. The next day, they they trap the shorts and then they start punishing them uh, once again. Remember, we just talked about the 50-day, again, how strong it is and how, how important it is to be above it. If you've been watching the broadcast for the last, probably for the last X amount of weeks, you know about two stocks we've we've talked to. Uh, we talked about the potential of losing the 50-day moving average. The first one was Neo, right? Beautiful move, right? Neo, uh, we talked about it yesterday. Cl first close below uh, the 50-day moving average. Again, that is a sell signal. Uh, Neo is down roughly five and a half, six percent today. I haven't covered a single share yet. Uh, it's probably the wrong thing to do, but I, I want to see it down at least 10, 15 percent in the next couple of days. Just because when you lose the 50-day moving average, you have multiple days of selling pressure before you deemed, you know, people deemed it's a little overextended on one side. But again, you can see how important that 50-day moving average was. And if, if you've been following along, you know, we've been really, really uh, stalking this thing for, for, for a number of weeks. Again, crappy earnings, lost the 50-day moving average. Tomorrow, if it could confirm today's channel, I uh, went all the way down to 435. I still think in the next couple of weeks, uh, we could see that 360 level test, uh, which was the January, February, March, April 22 lows. But I would love to see sub four uh, for the stock on NEO. And this one was the big one, right? If you've been watching, if you've been watching the long, if you've been winning the webinar, following me on social media, you kind of know that I've been waiting for this channel to break for quite a long time, right? It, it, at some point, I got so frustrated on Tesla, I wouldn't even say the, the stock symbol anymore, okay? This morning, which is so funny, we talked about it in the morning strategy, this morning, I wouldn't even acknowledge the damn thing, okay? And slowly but surely, it started to get heavier. And little by little, it got a little more heavier. And da 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 we finally lost the 50-day moving average. Uh, the stock is absolutely getting hit today. Not only did it lose the 50-day moving average, it lost the 510 lows, this whole channel here. If this thing could get a, a close into, again, I don't know when, what time Kenyon is going to be uh, putting out the video, but right now it's the stock is trading uh, in the 68s, first close below the 50-day moving average. Um, I do understand and I acknowledge that there is a compensation for Elon Musk's uh, vote happening on the 13th. I think it's, I, I honestly don't know what time or whenever, but I know it's a couple of days away from the vote. I would love to see Tesla at some point in the next 24 hours start filling in this whole entire gap all the way down to the 66 and then ultimately all the way down to the 60 level. It would be absolutely amazing. But finally, we waited and waited and waited some more and waited and just couldn't take it anymore. And we waited and we wouldn't acknowledge her and we would ignore the hot girl and everything else in between. Finally, finally, congratulations for all you guys who are in it. I am holding uh, a runner and I'm hoping we could get a second day move uh, tomorrow uh, Tomorrow into um, continuation, right? Continuation move. Uh, some other names continue to look pretty good. Uh, again, it's very, very hard for me to give you guys a lot of setups going into tomorrow because the market is still three hours before the close. But ENVX, we talked about it last night on the video, continues to look good. It hasn't confirmed yet today, but continues to look good. All it needs to do is get above this linear regression line and this thing can wake up. I still like this FOUR. And now it's just consolidated. You can see it. It's starting to consolidate now two days in a row. This is three days in a row of higher lows off the five-day moving average. That's a very, very important point. Uh, it is just uh, eventually, if it could just get back above the top of the channel, it's been rejected now three times uh, in the last 72 hours, we could finally get a move here. The one name that everybody, again, is still in love with in the honeymoon stage is NVIDIA. We saw big price targets today all over the place. Uh, from Goldman Sachs, we saw some 150s. 
But here's where I think the next big play can be. And again, I'm not I'm not predicting anything. I'm not in the prediction business. I, I, I couldn't care less which way the stock goes. I'm just looking at it from the point of reality, right? Eventually, the greatest stocks, the biggest names, the biggest momentum, eventually they do have a backside move. Yesterday, I traded yesterday. I wanted to kind of get a feel. If you watched the video, I wanted to kind of get a little bit of feel of the stock. I got the feel of the stock. I still, I'm still watching it trade today. It's trading pretty well. I like what I'm seeing so far. But here's where I believe the next big value play. Doesn't mean the stock is going to go that in that direction, but the next value play is below the 10 day moving average. Granted, it's still several dollars away. It probably doesn't get there by tomorrow. The stock probably goes to 130, but just in case, right? We, we always talk about being prepared for everything, being prepared on both sides of the market because there's no guarantees that something has to happen. So just because you know you, you the stock gets upgraded, it doesn't have to go higher. Again, per case in point, yesterday you had Carvana got upgraded with you know with a big price target and the stock went straight down. So the big value play, whether it's tomorrow, the next day, or never. But the big value play is going to be the loss of the 10-day moving average. Because if it could lose the 10-day moving average in the next several days, yes, then we have $10, $15 worth of space uh, that we could definitely, definitely take advantage. But again, right now, it's not imminent. It's just something that I wanted to bring to your attention, set an alert below the 10-day moving average. And just in case it does confirm that 10-day you are going to be ready because that's the whole point, being ready for all aspects of what the market uh, has to give us. So that's it, guys. It's 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, hopefully, you guys will get this video at some point. Uh, usually, I don't make a uh, midday update, but again, daddy daycare, uh, that's my duties for the day. Your kid schedule is all over the place. Sometimes, you just got to you know make things work, and that's exactly uh, it's all about life. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.